Hi, this is Alan Cho from the Electrical Engineering Department of National Taiwan University. Here I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the ActionScript 3 particle engine meter. This is the emitter uh, project homepage. The URL is code.google.com slash p slash meter. And here I'm going to show you several emitter examples. This is the particle source, which is a particle source in its most basic form, a point. And this is line source. The particle source is in a, is in a line shape. And this is the circle source. You see particles are spawned in a circular region. And rec source is a rectangular shaped particle source. This is the display object source. Uh, this is new to immediate version 2. Particles are spawned over a region of a display object with non-zero transparency. Or in other words, non-zero alpha region. Okay, and this is the multiple source. Uh, in version 2, an emitter object can have multiple particle sources. So in this example, this single emitter object has three point sources. This is the radio gravity effect. Uh, the radio gravity is previously named point gravity in version 1. And here's the uniform gravity, named line gravity in version 1. This is the line deflector acting as a floor to reflect the uh, particles dropping from above. And this is the death behavior. In emitter version 2, now you can create complex particle behavior. So in this example, particles they, uh, the particles die when they exceed the boundary, which is this rectangle in the circle here. And this is the life trigger combined with spawn behavior. I'll, I'll cover this trigger and behavior more in later tutorials. This is the spawn behavior combined with the circular boundary trigger. So you can see when the particles hit the boundary, they split into smaller particles. And this double spawn behavior example shows you particles splitting twice into smaller particles, creating a fireworks effect. Okay, these are the basic examples, and here are several advanced ones. This one is the spark effect. The spark is actually, uh, is actually drawn in flash. And here is the flame effect. You can see there is an orange to dark red color transition. And this is actually a simple timeline animation created in flash without any fancy coding. Here is the matrix text example simulating the text effect from the movie The Matrix. Here's the Firefly, uh, which makes a good screensaver. This is the fireworks. You can see it's using spawn behavior to split particles into smaller fire sparks. This is the snow behavior. The snowflakes, oh no, I mean snow example snowflakes and the snow particles are both drawn in flash. The last one is a bomb, is the bomb example. This spark over here and this explosion fracture and this smoke puff are all created with the emitter engine. And now you see in this folder, in addition to these Swift files, you can actually see s some other XML files. In emitter 2, you can create an external XML file defining uh, the parameters of an object, of an element, like, uh, like an emitter, source, or particle. So in this bomb example, there are fractures inside. And this fracture has its parameter defined in this fracture XML file. So you can see, here's the scale node. I'll tweak this scale value from 1 to 4 save it. Now, reopen this file. And you can see the fractures are clearly bigger. So the advantage of using external XML files is that, is that if you want to tweak some parameters, you can simply change the XML file and reopen the Swift file without having to recompile the FLA source file, which is very convenient. 
and it's more flexible. Okay, so this is the introduction to the emitter engine.